This whole series started with a question. Is it possible to make some sort of primitive bread using only common wild edibles? Each culture has their own types of foods and ways of eating, but pretty much every culture has bread because it's a dietary staple. Now, if I want to make bread in, in the wild, first things first, I'll need to make flour. Now, uh, as I researched, I was surprised to see how many wild edibles could be dried, ground, and made into flour. Uh, plants such as plantain, various tree barks, goldenrod, stinging nettles, acorns, rose hips, clover, the list goes on and on. It seems that if you can dry it, you can make it into flour. And this was great news for me as I was researching. Now since goldenrod is so abundant across North America, I, just started, I decided to start with it first. So I went out, found a field full of goldenrod, and I gathered the stems and flowers together in, in a big bundle. I tied them into smaller bunches and hung them to dry for a couple of weeks. After they had dried, I removed the leaves and put them in a jar because I learned that you can make tea from them. Well, long story short, I made tea from the leaves and I tasted it and it was absolutely terrible, which is why I haven't made an instructional video on making goldenrod tea, because if I don't like it, I'm not about to recommend it to you. Anyways, I digress. So once the goldenrod had finished drying, I meticulously picked all the flowers and gathered them together in a pot. I ground the flowers between two stones into flour, baking flour that is, and since all the uh, survival websites and books told me that goldenrod, goldenrod flowers could be made into a flour substitute, I knew that if I mixed it with water, I should be able to make some sort of ultra basic dough that could be baked and made into a primitive bread. Easy. Now, I knew that since the dough didn't have any yeast or even any baking powder in it, that it wouldn't uh, rise like a normal loaf of bread but I knew that I should be able to at least make a flatbread or a crunchy pita style of bread out of it, which was good enough for me. Well, I mixed water with my freshly ground goldenrod flour, and, well, it didn't turn out uh, very well at all. It didn't turn into dough, actually. It ended up forming a crumbly patty that uh, tasted a lot like fried manure and grass mixed together, to be quite honest with you. So, what went wrong? Well, after doing further extensive research, I realized that I had been given incorrect information. You see, the term flower substitute is used very loosely in the survival and wild edibles community. Now, all the books and websites that I had learned from said that I could make flour out of almost any wild edible. But I noticed something fishy going on when in every recipe that I looked involving wild flour, uh, it also included equal portions of regular flour. As hard as I tried, I couldn't find a recipe where 100% of the flour used was from a wild edible source. And that's because pretty much all wild edibles don't contain a binder. Most true flours have a binder that holds the dough together. It's what makes the dough, uh, gives it the doughy consistency. And uh, most binders are, are known as gluten. Now some flours may not have gluten, which means they'll need a different kind of binder to hold them together. And sometimes uh, these binders can be eggs, milk, certain types of baking gums, etc. All of these can be used as binders. But gluten is the main, is the main binder that is found in flour. And uh, so this is why it's pretty much impossible to make dough using wild flours, uh, baking flours, on their own because they don't have a binder in them. In fact, most wild edibles that survival books say you can make into flour don't even contain starch, which is another key ingredient to true flour. So instead of things like goldenrod being called flour substitutes, I think they should actually be called flour extenders, because although they can't be, they can't be made into dough on their own, they can be added in with true flour to complement that flour. Unfortunately, this didn't help me get any closer to making primitive bread in the wild. So I decided to search for a common wild edible that could be used as a binder with any wild flower that I made. Well, my search paid off and I believe I found a common wild plant that can be used as a binder and you're looking at it right now. And if you watch the next video I'll tell you what it is and how to use it to make your very own primitive bread.
And if you like today's video, anything about to wild edibles or the outdoors, then please feel free to subscribe. Thank you for watching.